All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the Puppet Warp tool to create a GIF animation. So to start off, I've just opened up this image that has um, these birds on it. So it's set as a locked background layer. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to just duplicate that layer. Um, and what I want to do, that's fine for now. So what I want to do is I actually want to separate um, one of these birds and put it on a different layer. Whatever it is that you're trying to warp or sort of morph needs to be on its own layer. So um, depending on what it looks like, you can select it in a variety of ways using the different selection tools. You might need to cut it out with the magnetic lasso tool. Um, but for the, in this case, I think I might be able to get this with predominantly the magic wand um, just because it's all solid black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now copy that. So I'm going Command C, or I could also go up to Edit and hit Copy. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to paste it there. Before I paste it onto that layer though, I want to delete it from here. I don't want it to be on this background layer because when I actually start to flap the wings of this bird, I don't want to see this black underneath. I want to replace it with just white. So I'm going to delete and now I'm going to hide that layer so I can actually see what I've actually deleted and now on this layer one I'm going to paste it in. So now I can see that on my layer one I've got the actual bird and on the background copy, if I hide this, I can see that I've got sort of this blank space that I need to patch up. So what I can do is I can actually, I'm going to select my white and I'm going to fill this in here and I'm actually have to, going to have to go in and erase some of this or fill it in, in this case, I'll just fill it in with a brush with this exact same white. I'm going to hide that part too. So you can see how this might be more complex if you're cutting something out that's actually um, a photograph or something that has a more detailed background rather than just replacing um, the solid color like I am here with white um, you might have to use the clone stamp or use something um, like um, some of our uh, different copying tools or redraw in some cases to replace the background. Okay, so now I've got my bird separated onto a different layer and this is what I'm going to actually work on um, puppet warping. So um, I'm going to create um, another frame here. And when I get my other frame, it gives me um, a new layer here as well. So what I want to do is I actually am going to copy this bird from layer one. I'm going to paste it onto this new layer. So now you can see I've got this bird on here twice. All right, I'm going to line it up there. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to puppet warp this uh, layer here. So I'm going to go to edit and puppet warp. And I get this sort of grid that pops up for me on whatever is on the layer that I'm selected on. When I click, it's assigning, um, it's almost like little um, push pins on a bulletin board. And what I want to do is I want to put these push pins in sort of the pivotal points where something might move or I'll, at the same time where I might want them to, to remain um, and, and not be moved. Okay, so once I've done that, if I go back and actually click on these yellow uh, circles, I'm able to move them and morph them a little bit. So I'm going to sort of make the next stage in this movement. I'm going to have the center of the bird start to rise up and the wings start to flop down. Notice that I've kept my layer underneath visible for me so I can see what that bird looked like originally so I know how much I might want to actually move it in relation to what happened above. Once it's actually set the way I want, I'm going to press enter, and there we go, and this is how it's set. So let's just uh, take a look at our frames here. If I go to frame one, I want to hide this, and I just want my first um, bird layer to be visible. If I go to frame two, I want to have my frame two layer visible, and I also need to keep my background visible so I can see what's happened here. Okay, so I've got the first stage in the movement. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to call this frame 3. And I'm going to make a new frame. That actually made a new layer for me as well, but I'm going to do it this way because this ensures that my bird is actually going to be in the exact same space for me, and that's going to be really useful other than copying and pasting it like I did the last time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to puppet warp this one and I'm going to keep going in sequence until I've completed all the stages in the bird's um, wings fully flopping. So I'm going to put them in the same spot 
and I'm going to pull it down a little bit more, pull this up. You have to be uh, super exact when you have something that's just a solid color like this, but you can imagine if you had something more detailed that you'd really have to pay close attention into, into where it was actually moving. Press enter once I'm done. And now I have to go in and hide the layers that I don't want. I don't want this one visible on frame three. I'm going to go back and check here. I don't want that visible there. All right. And let's see, I've got my animation set to loop forever. Let's see what I've got so far. All right, it's going really fast. I don't want to have that selected, so I don't have to see that. Okay, it's pretty much as easy as that. I would probably slow this down and I would probably have a few more steps in the movement. If I wanted to, I could also um, reverse that movement, create some new layers, and then just select um, the, or create some new frames, sorry, and select the layers accordingly so it, the, the loop continued a little bit longer. If I wanted to do this with another bird, I would do the same thing. I'd go back to my background, cut out another one, place it on separate layers. If I was gonna do that, I'd probably organize these into folders so it didn't get too confusing over um, which bird I was working with. And that's pretty much how we use our Puppet Work tool.